Oh, I hope you can't hear this because I suck in terms of singing. Hello and welcome to the stream. If you have watched my previous stream, you're going to be seriously disappointed because we're now going back to the more serious business of uh, computing uh, lunar eclipses on Jupiter. Uh, and if that excites you, well, then stick around, uh, but you're probably even more boring than I am. No offense. Okay, so um, we've got quite a few things to do on today's stream, or we're going to try to get done. <coughs> uh, the first is uh, to cough a little bit so the phlegm comes up, and so we're, we're past that one now, and that's good. Um, yesterday we found out that using the uh, calculations uh, I talked about earlier, where you look at uh, points that are 90 degrees away from the center of the planet, in the plane of the, um, I'm almost thinking we, we almost have to kind of bring up that image, uh, in the plane of the, uh, of the, you know, the, where the sun is rising on the planet, or where the sun is up in the planet, uh, didn't work because we uh, ran some experiments and we found out that not only did it give the wrong times for lunar eclipses, uh, it actually said there was a lunar eclipse when there was only a partial eclipse. And of course, for our testing purposes, we're using uh, the Earth, Moon, Sun, which are much better known uh, than the um, than the Jovian lunar eclipses, uh, which some of them are documented, but not all of them. Okay, so um, the first thing I wanted to check was uh, just that I had made a simple mathematical error and that it actually was a conceptual error. Uh, but there's a bigger issue here, and that is we'd really like to be able to get partial eclipses too. Uh, what we'd really like to be able to do is to compute the degree of eclipsity, eclipses, uh, the degree of how much of an eclipse there is um, anywhere on the planet. And then we can get the minimum and maximum, and based on that we can say entire planet is in total eclipse, uh, entire planet is in partial eclipse, or you know, no eclipse at all, whatever, whatever it is we need to do there. Um, we're going to use Mathix to do that, and fortunately, and, and previously we've taken stuff we've done in Mathix and moved it to C-Spice. This time we're going to take the stuff we've done in C-Spice and move it to Mathix. Unfortunately, I don't think there are closed form formulas for all of this, so we will be doing some experimentation uh, and just sort of looking to see if we can find max and min um, you know, when we have these functions. And another sort of glitch here, a nice little glitch here is, um, if you're on the dark side of the planet where the sun's not shining, we don't care if there's an eclipse or not, because the planet sort of eclipses itself there. Um, just like, you know, and if the Earth didn't have an atmosphere, the dark side of the Earth would be totally dark as well, except for city lights or whatever. But So the issue we're getting into here is uh, we also have limit conditions. So if the darkest, if, you know, if the greatest eclipse occurs on the dark side of the planet, doesn't count. Uh, or the least eclipse occurs on the dark side. So we're going to have that as well, and uh, that may or may not be easy to solve, I don't know. Um, but we should, we should be able to get, hopefully, some idea of how eclipses form on, on planets. And if it turns out that what we're doing is not a mathematical error, uh, we, should be, we should try to look at why the simple two-dimensional diagram we used is not accurate for what we're doing. But the first things first, and I guess the very first thing first is to make sure that I've got this all saved to, to GitHub, because if I don't, then I'm breaking stuff. So let me check that real quickly, and you can't, I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm on another machine. Uh, oh yeah, I, did, I do actually um, need to save the one file here. Git push it, or actually just get it into my git repo and then push it, whatever. Okay, and by the way, this is the cool code we created yesterday, uh, and we have, there's some issues with it as well, and one of the issues, of course, is uh, we want to be able to move the cone anywhere, we want to be able to stop and start it anywhere. Well, we'll probably start it at the, at the tip, but stop it anywhere, and the, um, it turns out the degree of this cone is actually 90 degrees, it's kind of hard to tell. This is a very wide cone, we want to be able to choose cones that are different, uh, different widths. So all of that is sort of like an advertisement for what's coming up later, except it's the opposite because it makes you not want to watch it. Um, but you know, whatever. Okay, so let's go back to bclib.h, um, and the function that does all this magic here is um, separation data uh, perp vector. Uh, as so what we want to make sure is that the uh, the perp vector uh, is actually reasonable in the sense that it's perpendicular to the sun, and that it is also um <coughs> approximately the right length for uh, for our the radius should be about correct. 
Um, also, this is actually probably a terrible way of doing things here. Um, and I don't know why I'm doing... Oh, I guess because we, we have to move s pos and t pos. We can't move the uh, anything else. But this is still probably a really bad way of doing things. Um, so this just prints out the values of um, CEP n and CEP s. So why don't we go ahead and print the perpendicular vector here as soon as we get it. And this is going to be spammy because this routine is actually called uh, multiple times as uh, the geometric finder tries to find the minimum or maximum value. So this will be a little bit spammy, but that's okay. And I still think there's a better way of doing this that doesn't require writing out all three elements of the array like this, but whatever. Okay, so we'll go over here. We'll go to BC get Astro to make it. Okay, make sure it makes okay. Um, and the problem, of course, is when I update BC lib.h, I need to at least update something else. Uh, because just updating that doesn't update the, doesn't cause the make to rebake. My, the, my make is a special make. Uh, so that's why that doesn't work. Okay, so let's do this. See what happens here. Um, not looking great. Um, Mincorn. Okay, this is um, not what I'm expecting. So this maybe we need to be a little bit more specific here. Uh, what is this going to be? This is going to be inside of the function. Um, oh, we're in the wrong function here, sorry. Uh, this will be inside the function mincorn eclipse. A min corner eclipse. So let's go ahead and, and, and print that out so we know what we're doing. Um, a little bit worrisome that we're not seeing it called at all, but um, uh, hopefully that will get fixed now. Or maybe I just wasn't paying attention, which happens a lot. Okay. But now we should be able to see it with a nice little uh, label on top of it. Okay. Um, min corner clips. Okay, not cool. So let's just make sure that we actually did get an update on BC occultations. Um, yeah, just it just compiled. Um, so what's going on here? I guess is the is the problem. Um, min corn eclipse gives us the. This is the function that we're we're definitely calling this function because we're calling it from. We're creating our own function that is basically the min corner eclipse of something, and then we so we should be calling it a heck of a lot. Um, so it worries me that we're not we're not getting to this point here. Uh, let's just go ahead and be crazy and just say. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll just camel case it correctly, even though it doesn't matter at all. Because um, now I'm worried. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a touch BC occultation C, make, uh, and then let's see what that does. And dun dun dun. This is not cool. <whistles> That's not cool at all. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this. Maybe it's because we're we have no total solar eclipses. Uh, total. We have yeah. We have no solar eclipses that cover the entire planet Earth. We do have lunar eclipses of that sort. So I forget what the syntax is, but yay, it'll tell me. So the observer this time will be, oops. The observer this time will be the moon, because we want to see uh, the uh, Earth will completely block every point of the moon. And I think this should do what we want. Dun, dun, dun. Uh. Okay. Actually, I guess we are going to just call it min corner eclipse. So either something really weird is happening, or um, something else really weird is happening. See how I saved myself there? All right, let's do this, and let's do a sort minus unique to see if whether we're getting um, these results somewhere where we're just not seeing them, and we're not. We're not only getting these two. So this is this is good stuff. Um, we've screwed something up pretty badly. Um, so let's see. So this returns spice double. Um, And this is BC occultations. This is the one we're calling. Oops, I screwed up. Oops, I did it again. I'm going to be calling BC occultations. And I think 
that my sort of standard call for that is over here. There it is. Okay, so that's that's why that didn't happen. Okay. Um, and I did remake it just by accident. Uh, Min Corner Eclipse is a. Um, so this looks to be a very. This looks to be like a, a fairly decent sized vector. Is it uh, is it perpendicular to the sun? I'll probably believe that it is. Um, I'm not really crazy about the way that I subtract and add from uh, S and T to actually change them. In fact, I'm kind of worried now that um, no, no, we compute S, S pos and, and T pos, so that's okay. We, we're not passing them as variables. Okay, so okay, well. So what we actually are going to print here now is, um, wow, um, interesting. So, yeah, I'm not even crazy about the way we're doing this at all. I think I've said that now 527 times, which is the magic number. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of considering not trying to solve this problem because I think even if we solve it, it's not going to help. We're going to end up writing a new subroutine. So let's go ahead and be brave and not do anything with this. Um, so we will, um, we won't do this. Oh, that's a pop-up. Um, and we won't, oh, I guess we did, what the hell? Did I already remove the printout of the, uh, of the vector? I hope I did because uh oh 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 okay wow that was just really bad um okay and hopefully that didn't do anything terrible okay so I got rid of all the all the the prints we didn't need um so let's go ahead and look at readme stream to see what we're going to do next quite a bit of stuff going on here um So what we're going to do is, I really need that other diagram back up here, don't I? Let's do that. Uh, and I should be able to bring up uh, MathX twice. And the other thing I want is, do we need to quote it? I mean, I should need, I don't, but I should. Oh, um, user BC get MathX. And I think this is the, the, the two-dimensional diagram we created and we want to sort of briefly look at. Um, and it's going to be in a different directory, of course. It's actually probably okay, though. Um, I'm hoping that I haven't changed BC Eclipse diagram too much to the point where this doesn't work anymore. Dun, dun, dun. And apparently I either have or it's just taking forever. Either way, not good. And I might have just changed what gets printed out. Um, yeah, G7 is what should be printed out here. I mean, I will move this to a little bit later in the, the, um, the program. So, because maybe it has to be the very last thing. I'm just going to keep making up excuses until it works. Seriously? Seriously, seriously? Equal? Wow. Okay, this is bad. Um, that shouldn't break, though. Alright, we'll see why it's breaking here in a sec. Um... Oh, we might have actually commented out the uh, the values that we're uh, yeah the values that we were using for our printing, which are these values, and so that might help. Oh, that really broke things pretty badly. Let's see if this unbreaks things pretty badly. Not good so far. 
maximum recursion depth exceeded while calling Python object. That is some messed up stuff there. Um, this is one reason we use GitHub so we can pull older versions that we know were good. Although we also have it on uh, we also have it on film, and by film I mean electronic media. Alrighty, so what the hell is going on here? Oh, below the sign Mathematica, so that's not good at all. Um, so what the hell did I do here? I, I mean, I should have kept something that was pristine. Um, is it BC Eclipse Mechanics, maybe? I love the way I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It's, it's my code, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Let's see what this does. Yeah, that's not good either. Um, nope, it's not that. Uh, BC Eclipse 3D Mathics. Um, that's the one where we have the co Oh, actually it might not be the one where we have the cone, but then again it might be. BC Eclipse Portions? My god. Oh, that would be it. I am the insane coder. Come on, 900 times the charm. New. No. That's not even that difficult. Oh, this might be my attempt to draw a cone or something. This might not be good either. Well, I'm very disappointed in myself that I did not have a um, a version that would actually um, demonstrate the diagram, which I, which I really should, because I mean that's that's an important um, diagram. And oh man, let's see. I guess I could, after we compute G7, I could put a G7 here comment out everything else, which by the way, I don't even think mathematics, oh, I guess it does uh, support uh, nested comments, or maybe it supports Eclipse Diagram, and if this doesn't work, we're just going to say screw it, and move on to something else. Diagram, nope, doesn't like it, oh wait, hang on, okay, that's not what I expected, um, I, whew, that's strange. Oh, there it is. This is what I wanted. Yay! Uh, somehow it just, if you do it a hundred times, it comes out. Okay, so this was our original diagram, and what we were saying here is if you are at this point, uh, what you need to do is check for eclipses here and here, and if they're both eclipsed, then you have eclipses all over the planet. Clearly not true. Um... And, and I, I tried to figure out why this wasn't necessarily going to be true. I mean, if you have three points, the three centers of masses, the three centers of these planets, which we're considering to be spheres, you can definitely create a plane out of them. You can definitely draw this diagram. The only thing you can think about is when you go sort of into or out of the screen, because this is really a sphere, not a circle, uh, you have to bring the sun into or out of this, the sphere as well, I, I think. I mean, I'm still not 100% convinced that's true. Um, but I think that may be where the, the, the failure is occurring, um, is that we're not considering there's another road, because T definitely is also, T definitely has to rotate, because we can't, we can't keep T stable. So that might be where all this, uh, this badness is occurring. Um, so what we want to do now is we are going to consider, okay, so we are going to, um, so now we're going to, uh, we have a really nice function in CSpice that we wrote uh, that says how much, uh, you know, what the eclipse factor is. And I'm going to do something very, very terrible right now. Um, we earlier created a function called, actually, it's a, I think it returns a spice double. Min corner eclipse. Um, turn value is all of Q is eclipsed. Okay, so we're going to screw this one up too, but we're going to screw this other one up first. Separation data. So the separation data function returned zero if there was 
barely an eclipse, minus one if there was a total eclipse, meaning the entire uh, anterior body was eclipsed, and worse than minus one if the, um, if the, uh, okay, I was going to flip this so that it became one for full eclipse and got bigger, but actually I think maybe I won't do that because that is actually probably a stupid thing to do. Okay, um, so let's see. So this is from an arbitrary, okay, let's see what this is. Um, um, all right, and again, this looks a little bit funny because our origin point is, is wherever we're viewing from. So here the origin point is the center of Q, but we could imagine the origin point being anything along the sun-facing surface of Q. And that is going to be possibly an issue. But let's go ahead and look at this function. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure um, basically this. The, uh, the vector separation from a given point of two things, given S, S, uh, vectors s and t, uh, minus this arc sine mi uh, and um, let's see. This doesn't do what I think it does. Uh, actually, it might. I have no idea. Okay, so we're, we're going to measure that quantity from any given point Q, and uh, you know, and we Q is zero, of course. But then we're going to going to ask, well, what if we move to the surface of Q? What does that uh, What does that curve start to look like? Uh, what is that? Uh, how does that value change from the theoretical center point, which we can never reach, to these uh, points where, where we actually can reach? Um, and boy, this seemed clearer in my head earlier than it is now. So let's go back to BC Eclipse 3D since we are working in 3D. And um, one thing we also want to do is sort of improve the way we're drawing it. Right now we're just sort of artificially drawing the cone by, you know, as a one-off. We really want to be able to draw uh, cones th any way we want them to because we're going to draw umbral cones at some point. Um, but for right now, let's do exactly what I said we didn't want to do earlier which is let's add some data, let's add some uh, c computations here and break this. And this is this, by the way. Yay. I still I still like the way that it's got such a sharp point on top. And I don't know why that should surprise me, but it does for some reason. Um, it's, it's very, come on, I don't want to, I don't want to keep carrying you around, man. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, let's look at it the other way. So anyway, it's a very sharp point here, and I kind of like that. I don't know why. Yeah, don't don't speculate too much. Okay. So now we're going to say uh, go back to this diagram here, but we're going to go we're going to go ahead and make it 3D. And actually, we're going to look at um, the function we've already written. No, 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 no. This function that we've already written here. Um, so let's see. Given two vectors s and t, and I guess we're going to say the latitude and longitude. Um, from Q, uh, because we're, we're going to be on the surface of Q here, so, uh, well, actually, sorry, let's just go ahead and get this one done first. Um, so I forget if vector angle is a function that is defined anywhere. Um, if not, we can, we can define it. I mean, did I create a bclib.mathics? I might need to. Um, all right, so let's see if a uh, vector... I think I already have it running, so uh, vector angle. All right. So what's the vector angle between one zero zero and zero zero one? Well, it better be ninety degrees, uh, which is pi over two or whatever. Yes, it is. Fantastic. So vector angle. Um, so we take the vector angle between s and t, and s and t are going to be vectors. That's why we take the vector angle uh, minus uh, the. Um, yeah, maybe I should, let's see, minus the arc sine of the radius of t over the, and I'm pretty sure this is just norm. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is just the norm function. Norm! Yeah, okay. Uh, the norm function here over norm um, of t. Um... And see, the way this is written, it's it's not really that clear. With okay, so this is norm of t. 
we might just say, um, uh, let's see, so it's a minority. And then I guess if we wanted to, we could just subtract off. Now, there's something, that we gotta be careful here because we wanna make sure that, uh, uh, actually I think it says what exactly what we need to make sure of here. Right. Um, okay, right, right. So, so separation minus T angle, right, that's, that's what we want. Separation minus T, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the angular radius of T, the angular radius of S, um, and then that, um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So angular radius of T divided by, so here, this is set minus tar, good so far, um, minus over SAR, this is that, minus one, the whole thing over two. Okay. So we'll, I'm not sure we want to use this function exactly the way it is, but we'll say this is a, give, given a position for S, a vector, um, a radius, a T, and a R. Um, I wonder if I can get away with doing this. I think it's going to be unhappy because um, vector angle expects its its arguments to be uh, already vectors. So I think, yeah, whoa, okay, got it. Jesus. So we're going to do set equal, which is delayed delayed evaluation. So we can only call it with actual numbers. We can't call it in a generic form. But let's make sure we can actually call it with uh, with numbers. Uh, one zero zero for point one. Uh, one zero zero point one. Point two. And we can. Awesome. Okay. Um, so this is a good function, but this calls it from you know the center of the uh, the planet from right here. Uh, and to call it from a different point, we're just basically going to have replace x, s, and t with the uh, with the uh, with m with minus the vector that goes from the center of this planet to the surface of this planet at a given latitude and longitude and the vector that goes from the uh, uh, surface of the planet to the longitude latitude that's your basic uh, x y z uh, to uh, spherical coordinates which i hope i do not have here and so i'm going to bet you i don't yep i do not um so it might be time to start building a little little library for this guy um, so let's see, we're gonna, it's not that hard to come up with these. I mean, all you have to remember is that there's a QR in there because the uh, Q has a radius of R. Um, so uh, there's a lot of things we can do here. I, I think one thing I want to try doing here is let's try this with actual known values. And I'm going to regret this deeply, but let's do that anyway. Um, so BC occultations and this, um, okay, good, but we do want a little bit more information out of BC occultations, um, which I guess we decided we didn't want, but, uh, usage, that's fine. Moon, sun, planet, not found. So yeah, this only gives results, th which is fine, which is fine. Um, but we do want to add a little bit more to it, which we can get from BC obscurations, because we will need now the vectors and the um, and the radiuses of the uh, of the S. Well, you know what? I can probably just do that. Um, and I can even print it as a separate line. Okay. And I can even do this. Um, S. Uh, and we're thinking of S as being our. I don't even know why I bother doing this. You know what? We're just going to say sun. Screw it. The vector of the sun, the sun rad, uh, the vector of the... Okay, why? Why, why, why? All oh right, we only print the moon ID, sun ID, and planet ID, so in case we run the pro uh, program multiple times. Uh, but we actually are doing all of our calculations uh, from the moon. So we should not ever have a place where we're calculating the moon vector. And that is good. Yes, the only thing we're doing with that is we're just 
uh, doing an ID for that. So that, that's fantastic. So then we're going to say planet. Oh, let's be really spiffy here. Planet percent F. Oh, let's be really spiffy here. Okay. All right. So where's the sun vector? I know we we compute it. Um, actually, this is going to be inside of the loop. Um, oh. We don't actually know the position of the sun here, do we? Because we, we've done all of our magic here. Uh, and we don't have to compute the sun position here at all because somebody else does it for us. Or And the radius, now that, it, now that I look at it, actually, I think um, all that happens outside of here. That was unexpected. Um, so this tells us when the b eclipse begins and ends. I guess what we're going to do here is not do this printf in here, but in bclib.h, which I don't like doing. Uh, but this is the Elmer animal. We don't care. Um, separation data. So we want to make sure this thing is returning the same uh, quantities uh, as our little test function is. Uh, and, and we could do it with made up data, but, um, you know, um, we're not going to. Um, print F. Okay, so here's where we can say S and SR. And that's just going to be S0, S1, S2. And then SR. We'll do the same thing for T. And again, Q is by definition at point zero. <laughs> and this is by definition going to be very ugly because we call this a lot, I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, and this is, we just sort of need this for, because uh, I don't really want to look at this whole value um, only from the return. I want to look at it from here. Okay. No, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, semicolon, done, done, compile, and test, I guess. So we have, um, let's do this. I think that worked. Okay, and we're doing this from here. Okay, yeah, that is giving us quite a bit of data here. Um... I think it's just printf. I don't need to do a pipe. Uh, I don't need to pipe the stidder. Okay, so we have all this lovely data here. Um, now we can go back to Mathix over here. I don't know where the hell Mathix is. Where do I have it? There it is. So T1644 of SSR. Let's see. And, you know, if I'm going to just really be obnoxious like this. I might as well print it in a form that Mathematica could use it. Um, which is means put little braces around it. Little commas and spaces just to be nice. Uh, then SR is a separate parameter, so I'm okay with that. This, this, this. I mean, hey. If you're going to do it, do it wrong. Wrong, do it with me. That is the um, song uh, by Wham. Okay, that worked. Okay. So now, first argument is S. Now that I think about it, I could probably do the whole thing as just a big cut and paste, but I'm not going to. Okay, crap. 45, 1, I need to on the right line. This. Uh, T is this number. No, I'm sorry, T is this vector. And... TR is this, which is, oh, that's the Earth radius. Good. Got 199, and they get 199.41. So good. This is, at least for this one example, this is giving the same values uh, as, the, uh, as, the, as the program is. Okay. Um, so now what we want to do, um, 
let's see. Unfortunately, the problem is when we do a... Th this is just going to go like crazy over here. Um... Yeah, we are, we are kind of, I'm trying to find a number where it's fairly low, even maybe a little bit negative, so we actually have an eclipse. Um, and, oh, there's one, okay. Um, so let's see if this does it. This is a bit of a negative, still not a negative beyond one. Um, Let's see if we can find one that is negative one. If I can, okay. Colon negative one. Oh, very nice. Very, very nice. So we, this here is uh, what appears to be a, a very heavy total lunar eclipse. Let's get this cut and pasted somewhere before I forget it. Um, okay, and obviously this is not in, this is almost in the right format, actually. Um, Okay, so we have this, and now we might as well say, yeah, actually, I think we can almost, we can almost cut and paste this sucker. So this is S, I'm going to go ahead and give this a new line. This is SR, uh, this is going to be T and TR, so T is going to be this vector, um, TR is going to be this value. Uh, and then, um, okay, let's see if I can load this in as is, uh, and, uh, and still have it make sense. Okay, and we want to compute T1644, we'll give it a better name in a minute here, SSRTTR because we happen to have them assigned correctly. Beautiful. So this is what happens at the center of the, the non-existent center of the planet. But now what we can do is we can ask for the positions at a, a different latitude and longitude by subtracting, because we're using zero, Q as the center vector, we have to take the position on the, uh, on the surface and then subtract it from S and T, so we get the vectors as viewed from the surface. Um, and if we do this right, we should be able to nail um, pretty well what the eclipse looked like at a given time. The lunar eclipse looked at, at like a given time, which is which is bad because we don't actually have the um, uh, we don't actually have the uh, the maps that we need to look at that. But um, all right, let's see what we're doing here. Um, da -da -da -da. I think it'll be helpful anyway, just to sort of see. Um, how the eclipse uh, the eclipse parameters vary based on latitude and longitude. So again, we're going to be very sloppy here for right now. Uh, lat, lon, and I'm going to go ahead and leave those. And we're not even going to put in the other parameters right now. Um, it's going to be T1644. Um, okay. Actually, I think I need to do a little bit better than this. I think I need to do... All right, we're going to give in and do a BC lib. Actually, do we have a BC lib mathics here? I don't think we do. Um, but I guess if we're going to be proper, we're going to put it in the top level. We're not going to put it in the subdirectory. But now we have one. And we're going to steal some stuff from BC lib M. And the stuff we want to steal is going to be like just the very simple stuff. X, Y, Z. I vaguely remember doing this before. Um, So it kind of worries me. Um, I could have sworn I did some something like this before, where I, I pulled in some Mathematica into Mathix. Okay, so over here we now need to do at the very top of this file bc git bc lib dot Then over here we should be able to say, and this is again just for testing, spherical x y z coordinates. Um, so it's going to be longitude, latitude, and radius, which is QR, but we don't actually have a value for QR, so we'll just say 1 for right now. 
All right, let's see what that does. That's not too bad. Um, I mean, it didn't give us an answer, but still. <whistles> nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, fantastic. Good deal. Okay. So now what we can do is we can measure... Um, you have to just create a table of this stuff. Just got to be a little bit careful here. Um, Do we know how big QR is in this case? Do we have a do we have a value for QR? Um, oh, we don't because we don't actually care because we're only looking at the center. Um, so in this case, the Earth being oh god. Once again, I will have to check the uh, parameters. Okay, the moon, so the, this will be the radius of the moon. Um, which we can sort of, it's like 1700 something kilometers, but we can cheat and get it by flipping this and this. Yeah, 1737.4, and okay, so we'll use that. That's gonna be our QR. Okay. And hopefully we'll learn something from all this, other than the fact that we won't learn anything from all of this. Okay, so, um, let's see, we want to find the vectors that are at different angles on the, um, on the surface of the moon. And then we want to take, um, let's see, we want to take, um, We want to measure T1644 at them. So I might be overdoing it. You know, I think I'm, I think I'm being a little bit too cavalier here. Positions equals table. It's really called XYZ, and we probably need to flatten this by one level because we're going to be going um, in terms of degrees. Um, lawn times degree. Lawn times degree. Lat times degree. QR. And we're going to be doing that from longitude of minus 180 to 180, because we are multiplying by degrees. And step of 10, the latitude of minus 90 to 90 in steps of 10. That's probably going to be too big, but let's do it. Okay, that's really not good when it takes this much time. That should just be 36 times 18. Mm. Have we overdone it? And also the problem, because this thing really does want numbers, we actually do need to put an N in front of all of this. So we'll take the numerical of this QR. Did I define QR? Maybe that's the problem. That's weird. And let's try it one more time. If this doesn't work, we will um, we'll up our s step a little bit there from from uh, from 10 degrees to maybe 20 degrees. Yep, not looking too good. Alrighty, break 20, and then. Okay. Come on, this should not be hard. I'm getting suspicious. Uh, it should not take you this long. Oh, okay, there it is. Um, unfortunately, I think the way I've got this is it's um, each list element consists of an array of of positions, which of course we don't really want. Um, and so if I'm correct, and I'm not, I'm going to be, um, I'm not going to be right about this. I think if we do flatten positions one, uh, we should get, and I did say temp, 190, which is 
let's see, that would be 109 times, uh, blah, 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 actually, the 7. Um, temp 5. Okay, good, good. This actually worked. Okay, fantastic. So these would all represent points on the surface. Um, uh, points on the surface of the moon as compared to the center of the moon. So, um, let's see. So we're going to do this. Flatten one. Mathematicians, math people who use Mathematica love to do this, where you combine as many functions as possible in one call. Okay, um, so we've got that now. And so I guess what we now really want here is a table of T1644 as measured at S minus positions. Oh, actually, we can just say S minus I because we're going to loop through these positions. Uh, SR doesn't change. T minus I because we're now observing from I, so the vector is now T minus I. TR as I loops through positions. And we should probably give this a name. T1704, because even though it is midnight, oh, it's Christmas Day in Greenwich. I don't celebrate, so I don't care. Iterator does not have appropriate browns. Oh, I guess we decided we'd need to bump these numbers up to 20 for right now. Um, at some point, we will be doing contour plotting or something here. Um, so let's do this. And this is taking a disappointingly long time, by the way. Uh, this should be a very fast operation. Um, even though I'm going like nine times, you know, some other... It's not, it shouldn't be that bad. Iterator, okay, now it should have appropriate bounds. Because I've got positions, length of positions. Oh, did I forget to flatten? No, I didn't. Positions, five. Table, I, I in positions. That should just be, oh yeah, all right. It doesn't support that, that uh, part of Mathematica. So we actually do have to do this. Positions, I. Positions I, and then I goes from 1 to length positions. Alright. So in real Mathematica, you can loop through a list here. Apparently, you have to loop through numbers that make up a list. I'm curious as to see what T1704 really is. And I'm even going to list plot it even though I can't do that, can I? Um, because there's no way to show the graphic. Um, I mean, we can do it over here. Or not, you know, whatever. Jesus Christ, dude. All right, let me see if I can actually load in Mathics and I haven't broken anything in, in the process. Okay, am I running Stellarium or something over here? No. Let me see if my main machine is, is choking. And let's see if the virtual machine is... Um, okay. Okay, and then the um, T1704. That's correct. If we look at it, it does show that there's different darkening depending on where you are on the surface. Um, although every point we've looked at so far actually has a darkening value of 
uh, of less than minus one, so there is an eclipse everywhere. Uh, what's interesting here is these numbers are the same, but these numbers are not, and I sort of expected them to be. I expected that when you go to a different uh, latitude and longitude, I expected there to be some symmetry that there is not here. Um, oh, I don't have a list plot here, do I? All right, no, not 1704, that would be too easy. All right, let's see what this does now. Yeah, it'd be nice if I told you how it when, it when it was done, whatever it's doing. Yeah. Not good. And this is a single dimension. It shouldn't have a problem printing this, actually. Oh, here it is. Yeah, that looks hideous. Not even interesting. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and push this to Git. We're going to improve this in just a sec here. Okay. Alright, so uh, we have this, which is the darkness at a point. Um, I think we can now actually go ahead and um, be a little bit careful how I want to give these variables. Um, we can, of course, measure this, uh, the, uh, the darkness at any latitude and longitude. We just use these as sort of, a, as sort of an easy way to, to, to keep track of them. Um, Okay, so the eclipse at, actually, let's see, STQ to, whoa, okay, eh, we have to, <laughs> stand by while we do something really silly. So what we're given is ST and Q, uh, we're not given QR, we we're given STQR, the radius of Q, because we're not, we're assuming Q is at zero, and, and then longitude, latitude, to darkness, to eclipse value. God damn, I'm not never gonna be able to type that out. Um, so this is, oh man, so S, I think we're, S and SR will consider as being you know, the value of S. T and TR, and then QR, then longitude, then latitude, and I'm going to go ahead and do it in degrees because I am a son of a bitch. Um, nope, changed my mind. They're going to be in radians. So it's going to be the vector angle of S minus uh, converting XYZ spherical coordinates. I'm um, sorry, spherical to XYZ coordinates of... Um, no, this is fine. Circle so XYZ coordinates of longitude, latitude, QR, uh, because that's what the new vector is going to be. And that and the vector. Oh, this is ugly. Um, well, we can just use our helper function then. Um, we, we better give this a name, though. Um, S T to eclipse value. That's not too bad actually. So this will be S T to eclipse value, but instead of S we want S minus X Y Z to C lon lat Q R and S R won't change. T minus X Y Z to spherical coordinates lon lat Q R and then TR won't change either. So we get this thing going on here. Okay, so this is fantastic. So we now we know what the degree of eclipse will be. Um, what we'd really like to be able to do is look at uh, this here, find the minimum and maximum uh, given LG and LNG and LAT. So um, I don't think we can do that, but let's, you know, let's give it a shot. We can differentiate it with respect to LNG and LAT, so that's not that's not it's not that bad.
And the other problem, of course, is we actually need to say, um, we need to give s as an actual vector. We can't just say s. Um, but again, maybe not terrible. Okay, I'm still not really happy why this is going so slowly. It's going to be this of s0, s1. Oh, you know what? sx, sy, sz, it's probably better. sr, tx, ty, tz, tr. Then I think it's just going to be uh, qr lung lat. And that's going to be something. Dun, da, da, da. Okay. So there's something on my main machine or something on this machine is being really slow. Or this is just... Let's see if there's anything really... Um, and because this is a VM, we can't actually see what, what's going on. So it says Mathix is really chunking up the CPU there. Um, which isn't great because this should not be that hard of a computation. I'm going to go ahead and check on my main machine here. And see if there's something here that's... Um, Okay, well, VirtualBox is sucking up a lot of memory, but I can't do anything about that because we're running. I can, I mean, I can close the like thing that controls it, but uh, and I can't close down OBS either because that's how I'm, that's how I'm streaming to you, wonderful people, and and the rest of you. Um, yeah, I I don't know if there's a way around this. Um, okay, whoa. Oh, fun, fun, fun. This doesn't work because... Um, because I have set values for all of these things here. So that was probably not great. Um, so let's unset... Uh, well, SX and SY should be fine. So SR, TR, QR, and then we'll get the same thing again. This time we should get it purely, there we go, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, well, not gorgeous, extremely ugly in fact. But we can take the differential of this with respect to longitude. Or we can have it crash completely, that was the other option. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Temporarily. So what we really want here is a contour plot of this value across the, the you know, latitudes and longitudes. Um, so let me see if... Um, and I think I have a playground here for this, which is actually useful. Um, yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, let's see if we can actually get it to do a contour plot of something very simple, uh, which is just this. And if, it, and if we can, there's some other cool things we can do with contour plot that I'd like to do. Um, that it makes them look nicer, basically, is that's all. Um, okay. So, home user mathix. So that does. No, you're right, because I meant to say bc git. Let's do this. Contour plot, that is just gorgeous that it doesn't even bother to to it doesn't know how to do contour plot. Okay, well let's uh, look to see here if we have a contour plot. Uh, the word contour doesn't appear anywhere in this uh, apparently in the stock. Well, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Is this searching the whole document or Yeah, apparently it is plotting uh, density plot. 
I think. Um, plot the density plot with sampling x squared over. Mm, pretty sure that's not what we want, though. I want a contour plot. I want a two-dimensional plot that um, that tells me what the values are at different positions. So color data, density plot, let's see what this is bottom as a value for fill plotting. Density plot, list line plot, list plot, mesh. Might be what we need. Nope, it's just an option. Okay, so okay, so the density plot Is density plot what we want here? Because I don't think it is. I mean, density plot has a different meaning. It's a density plot. Unless it just assumes that the value of f is what we want. Maybe that's... I get the feeling this isn't going to be right. Um, because that has a different meaning. But we'll, 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 we'll look. We'll give it a chance. Dun, dun, dun. Well, that actually isn't bad. I mean, this is at, at here, it's the lowest. Over here, it's the highest. Um, now, the things in Mathematica you can do with the contour plot, not a density plot, is you can change the color function. Um, and one of the things you can change it to is rainbow. I'm 99% sure this isn't going to support that. Um, I'm surprised it didn't crash. Okay, good, good. All right, so I think we do mention something about a color function here, color data they call it. But um, all right, call it density plot if you want to. Um, color function to test. Okay, so they actually do know what a color function is, and then you should even be able to control the number of contours. Um, Turns the color function with the given name. Define a user and define one. Plot the density from. Now, is there a way to get number of contours and stuff? Insta right now, it's just sort of going mushy on us. Um, mesh to full. Oh, the map, that's kind of nice, actually. Uh, mesh to all. And that shows the uh, level lines, which is nice. Um, And I think that there might not be a way to do contours. And again, you don't have to call them contours. Ah. Uh, values, lines, display lines, something. God damn it. Give me something, you piece of crap. Um, all right. Um, that's not cool. Okay, so what color functions are built into you? You won't tell me, of course, but I'm going to ask as though, uh, ooh, opacity. If we do opacity, that's going to help us a lot, actually. Um, all components range from the color function, so I got to be careful here. Um, Blend lighter, darker. So I guess we could define a color function like this. My color function of i, well of x, equals hue x11, and then color function to my cf. Um, the odds that this will work are somehow less than zero. It's a, it's it's a quantum thing. Let's see what this does. Okay, good. So it just totally broke without even getting close to what we want. Type of object ND array. The, the, the error messages here are so freaking insane. Um, all right, but let's see if we, how they do this. So color function can be... So I, I, th I could set it to gray level, which is presumably an existing color function, so I don't have to mess with creating my own. 
But something tells me this isn't going to work either. And dun, dun, dun. yep, didn't work. And that really should have worked. Gray level is an existing is an existing color function. That should not have had a problem with that. I'm surprised setting color function to something that's broken actually works, but setting it to something that's not broken doesn't work. Say that three times fast. So this is this is problematic. Um, and of course, the, the the real problem here is uh, that Mathix is was they stopped development on it, and and they're not they're not. Um, I don't think they're, uh, they're, they're, they're they don't really make a secret of out of that. Okay. I'm going to do something crazy and just put the exact code that they're using. Um, and see if that works, because if that doesn't work, we can kind of give up at that point. We can kind of say, well, you know, your own freaking function doesn't work. Wow. Den, 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 city plot. Okay, so we have this. All right, this is your own function here, dudes. Ah, uh, this is so bad. Oh, that's actually not the worst possible thing. Um. Close off density plot, and I guess I'm hoping this doesn't break anything because if it does, obviously it'll never get to line 114. One, two, three, four, and oh, it worked. Okay, so we there is hope. So density plot color function goes to um. Okay, so this might just be. This is how you specify a pure function in Mathematica. Gray level of the first argument in the ampersand tells you it's a function and not a um, uh, not a function call. It's a, it's a pure function. And those are different. So let's see what this does. Um, that's sad. Alright, let's see if gray level is even a function here. I mean... Oh, and I broke Mathix here, so... Gray... Yeah! What is... Oh, gray is just a color. Okay, well, that should have been a function, but let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Um... Blend red, green, blue... Percentage as a function... Let's see if we can do this. Hue. This will be the hue. This will be the. Um, now let's make sure hue actually is a function. It is. Uh, it might not do anything, but it's a function. Let's see what this does. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to set color function to this. Yeah, and just declaring a function there doesn't do anything. All right, three, two, seven. Um. Hmm. Interesting. So why it blend is its own function, I think. Why does it like it so much? Well, because it's its own function, that's why. Alright, let's see if this works. Although the rate we're going, no, it won't. Yeah. Alright, let's let's use the one that works first, make sure it's still working. And maybe clean it up a little bit. Okay, it does still work. Um, so it takes blend, red, green, blue is its first argument. Uh, whatever, is this, whatever number is being put into number here, which is the function argument. Um, okay, so I guess the question is, 
WTF? Let's see what Blend does. Maybe Blend has some magic properties that we, we don't know about. Um, the color between... According to the Factor X... That is just fantastic. Um, so what does it return? It apparently returns a pure color. Which means I shouldn't actually be able to even call it on the command line. Oh no, it returns an RGB color. Right, that's not too bad. Oh, uh, maybe it needs to return an RGB color. Well, I think we can handle that. And at some point, we need to figure out a way to fix the fact that this is not Mathematica. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do the Roy G. Biv thing here. Orange, yellow, green, Roy. Oh, cyan should be in there somewhere, but I don't care. Um, let's see if this still works. Presumably this will give us a little bit better values here. Okay, literally no change. I mean, wow, that took forever. Is not a valid list of color or or, or pairs of real numbers and a directive. Um, yeah, okay. Red, orange, yellow, green. Roy G. That this should work. I think it understands all of those colors. If it doesn't, I'll be annoyed. Um, yeah, I think indigo and violet it didn't like because it, it, it doesn't translate them into RGB colors. All right, see what this does. Yay, we have it. It's, um, it's really kind of nice. Um, so in theory, we could even use steps if we wanted to by creating a something that returns an RGB color Hmm. So the question is, is there a way to convert from uh, hue to uh, RGB? Which is maybe the only thing they freaking support. Um. Okay, good. RGB color, pretty solid. That's what monitors use. Um, RGB color, good. Broken, broken, broken. Broken. RGB color. Okay. Um, there are many predefined colors. Yada yada yada. So I'm wondering if uh, apparently it doesn't like. I mean, you know, hue. This is a perfectly good color. I wonder if we can do this. No, we cannot. Um, I'm wondering if there's a way to convert from hue to something else, and there's not. Color convert. That sounds promising. Color convert. Let's just see if it takes. We, we can use it with just one argument. I'm almost sure we can't. Yeah. RGB color. No, of course it's not. How about this? Oh, maybe RGB is the name of the color space. <gasps> Be still my beating heart. We can do it. Um, so now we can just create my own little... Let's go crazy here. And um, my CF of X is going to be color convert of hue whatever to RGB. Is, was, that in pr was that in quotation marks? Yes, it was. So, 
Um, and we still haven't gotten to what we really want. We're just now actually finally getting to what may be um, the ability to use color functions here. So let's, uh, let's go over here. And this should be the uh, rainbow color plot for x plot plus y. Uh, hue x x one one should be a color. Okay, that may just be because I forgot I did. You don't need it when you're using a pure function to put the ampersand. We still might. Be, I'm going to save this. This is really good. Um, this actually works. Um, so with a little bit of hard work and a lot more hard work. Oh, it's still it's still complaining even though it works. Qx11 should be a color. Oh, uh, uh, you know what I could do? I could do this. I think I can avoid the error by doing this, saying um, wait, you know, don't don't immediately um, don't immediately evaluate. Wait until there we go. So that's pretty nice. Um, now I could even do this. I wonder if we have a round function here. Um, Nice. We can round to the nearest. Um, let me. I'm gonna not overwrite what I have here. So if this works, we should see 16 colors because we're rounding off and we don't we don't use all we don't use in between values. So we're getting closer and closer to like saying number of contours equals something specific. That didn't look too good. Um, all right, my CF zero point one point oh one, that's too close to point point one one. That looks like more than sixteen colors to me. And the only thing I can think of is maybe I can't redefine a uh, set equal function, but still, that... That does not look like 16 colors to me. Let's do this with... Let's go crazy, though, and let's do this with 8 colors. So, my CF equals convert color, and we've tested it here, and that looks okay. So, in theory, unless you're doing something really weird, which I wouldn't doubt, uh, we should see eight colors here. Yeah, that looks like more than eight colors to me. Hmm. That's interesting. There should only be eight colors possible from what I'm what I'm saying here. I guess the only other thing is maybe it's blending or something, and I wonder if there's a way to tell it not to do that. Um, probably not. I mean, we're lucky we get anything at all out of this. Density plot. Um, X goes to OK. That's fine. Color function goes to blend. One problem with density plot is that it's still very slow, Basically due to function evaluation, come on, tell me, being s pretty slow in general, and density plot has to evaluate a lot of functions. Three-dimensional plots are supported as well. Plot 3D, blah, blah, blah. Oh, actually, we could probably use that. Um, oh, that, that'll be the same thing, though. That'll just give us the height. Um, so that's, that's that. Um... curve sketching. So a lot of stuff is not implemented here yet, and I'm not terribly happy about that. Um, I guess now we can actually density plot the thing we want to density plot, uh, since we know how to do it now. Take these two suckers out of here. Move them into here. Um, and I guess the round doesn't do anything, so we might as well get rid of it. Uh, density plot... 
Did I actually have one there? Minus 90 to... No, I don't think I did. Um, density plot... Um, this sucker. TTR, QR, which we have, and then lat. Oh, I think we'll do times degree here, so we can use n n integers. And uh, with uh, lun going from minus 180 to plus 180, and lat going from minus 90 to plus 90. With this color function, it's rock and roll. This could be very ugly and very slow, according to the uh, people who wrote it. So let's let's. Da -na 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 -na. By the way, um, I might have mentioned this before. That's not really the true. That's not what I wanted at all. Um, that is just freaky. Uh, the hell. Uh, all right, let me let me go ahead and load this in again and see what's going on here, but that is that that should not be So let me just test to see what the value here would be at um, Okay, that's fine. Um, that's... Now I realize these values are all negative, um, but in theory, density plot's supposed to be able to figure out and rearrange, rearrange them so that they are, um, they are between uh, zero and negative one. So at 80 degrees... Okay, it might be that our range is too small here, but it really shouldn't be. We should have, we should have quite a range here. Maybe we don't. Um, oh wait, did I F this up by putting degrees in there twice? Um, no, I didn't. That, that should be fine. And even if I did, I mean, there's no reason this should be all one solid color. I'm not really happy that I'm getting all these values that are so close to each other. That's just strange. Um, but they are different enough that, uh, well, maybe they're not different enough that this is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, this is pretty weird, because I remember when we actually did it, um, we actually did it with positions on a table. Um, we had some fairly different values, at least different enough that, uh, that we could see there's a difference between the max and the min. So this is kind of strange that all these values are coming in uh, very close to each other. Um, but let's take a quick look here. Okay. The max value is dun ta 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 dun ta ta. Well, that's not going to be good at all. Where is? Oh, I have to define. T1644, which I think I recalled now as, um, as this sucker. So we should be able to do that again. So not going great here. May just return to streaming insane dystopian adventures. Like I did earlier today. Excuse me. So the max and the min. Yeah, those are those are those are pretty those are pretty different. Um, 
I don't see why we should be having an issue. Um, I don't see why should we should ha not have a contour plot that looks better than this. Um, so I think the next problem here, uh, maybe that we're relying too much on Mathix, uh, certainly isn't being very helpful to us here. Um, C spy certainly gives us what we want, and I'm wondering if we can um, we can exploit that somehow, so that for example we print out. Um, we print out positions, we print out values um, at every position on, on the globe. Um, and then we see uh, at each position what the eclipse degree is. Because uh, this does not seem... Well, you know, let's give it one more chance here, actually. There's one thing I... Let me... Um, let me actually not try to set a color function. Let's just do, um, wait, what? Yeah, this is all quoted out. So let's just let it do it by its, with its own magical color function. Let's not try to override its color function. Shouldn't have an effect, but let's, let's just see what happens. Might do better. Oh. That's interesting. Uh... This is a very strange breakpoint here um, for it to go from suddenly being really eclipsed to being really not eclipsed. So this is kind of makes me unhappy. Um, well I've been running for an hour and a half now and we're just really sucking this up bad. So uh, your homework assignment and mine I guess is to figure out, um, well, whether we should give up on Mathix, which I'm beginning to think we should, because a lot of these functions you can also get out of CSpice, or you can get out of, uh, you can even do these things in Perl, or you can get a closed form formula out of Mathix, and then use that inside of Perl or the CSpice or whatever. So I think maybe our next approach here will be uh, to to use formulas, but put them somewhere else. Or maybe even use CSpice directly, because that is actually, um, it, you know, we can write another program that is actually pretty nice that tells you uh, what the uh, per degree, uh, and it's pretty fast, so what the per degree obscuration is at every, every point, and use that to determine um, if we, there's, there's a natural way to find a minimum and maximum in two dimensions, so we can, uh, we can answer our question of, uh, of uh, where there's a maximal and minimal eclipse occurring. Okay, thank you for watching and goodbye.